Okay guys, I'm back out here today working on this Case 230 square baler. And uh, I noticed the safety on this one is different than a New Holland. It runs in from the back. This rod right here is actually what actuates it. And what happens is when the needle carriage is in the home position, it pushes back on this finger right here. And that's what actuates that rod. So, the safety should have worked, but apparently the uh, plunger was already past the safety, or maybe the safety just wore out, but what happens is it comes in, uh, you can't hardly tell, but right up there is a, uh, a little piece that swings up in this chamber that uh, hits on the front of that plunger, and it's supposed to stop the plunger. I don't know if it's wore out or if the plunger was already past the safety. Uh, but either way, it should have prevented those uh, needles from getting broke off, and it didn't. I'm going to check the time on it. There's several places on here that, that you have to time. It's kind of complicated. It's a little more difficult than New Holland. But what I'm going to do is, first thing i got to do is, clean this drive shaft up, grease it, and, and try to get it connected to this tractor where it'll get it out of the way anyway. And, uh, I don't really particularly like this shield on here, but you know, that's the way it is. So I'm going to get this done and then I'll uh, show you how to start setting the timing on this thing. Okay guys, looking at the manual here, trying to figure out how you can tell if this thing's timed and really <clears throat> it don't really say uh, if there's a mark or anything on here like on New Holland there's a mark up here on this piece here and it corresponds with a mark on this piece here when this thing's in time but I really can't see any really any marks on this thing but what it does say is uh, if you trip the knotter and turn the flywheel counterclockwise facing rearward until the needles are flush with the inside of the bell chamber, at this time the tips of the plunger face gussets should be one inch to one and a half inch past the tips of the needle. And then if it's not, uh, you adjust as follows move the knotter chain not a drive chain one tooth in either direction on the lower sprocket or for very fine adjustment remove the two bolts on the lower sprocket and rotate the sprocket one hole in either direction and then check uh, the plunger needle plunger gussets clearance again and uh, so what we're going to do is I got a little bit of hay in here that's come in as I was moving this thing around so I'm going to clean it out and then we'll uh, we'll trip it and uh, go from there. We're gonna trip it by pulling up on this lever right here. That trips it. those gusset plunger face gusset should be an inch to inch and a half past the tips of the needles uh, it's going to be maybe a little more than an inch and a half gotta get my tape made what I did I backed it up just a hair and rechecked it and it is right there an inch and a half so we're good on the timing this time we're good now you get more we're good on that there's about three pages of timing stuff in here needles to tucker fingers you can see that's a tucker finger you got one on each 
one it's they're hard to see you can see a little better from this angle right there that's the tucker finger and uh we got one over here right there and that pushes the twine over and lets the uh i believe it lets the bill hook catch it as this needle comes in those tucker fingers are going to move over so now we need to check it should have uh one sixteenth inch clearance between the needles and the tucker fingers as they come when they move behind the needles. Alright, so we're Moose, but I wasn't even looking at what I was supposed to be looking at. I'm gonna blow this crap off. Now I gotta do that again. I need to see it. So right here, or right back, I'm going to have to do it again, but I think what, what it is, I've got too much clearance there. Now I can see a little better on this one. I've probably got man, I need one. I've probably got almost an eighth of an inch. And this one ain't even where it needs to be. There is some adjustment on here. Take that pin out to adjust it. This one looks right like it needs to be, but that one don't. I'll show you what I mean. And this right here will mess your tying up if you don't know. Let's see if you can tell. I'll put my finger on it. It's hard to see hard to see in there it's dark right here's and needs to be a sixteenth of an inch between now if you notice how much angle this thing's almost all the way behind that needle now 
and over here it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I gotta take this this little nut here loose and try to screw it in some more or push it out some more rather. Well actually I need to screw it in some more to get that to get that tucker finger about that position right there. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so I took this I take this spring off and then I took, pull this cotter key out, cotter pin, and I, and I run it in two rounds, checked it and it's too much, so I run it back around. And I think that's going to be about it. Uh, try it one more time. Showing a whole lot less clearance on this one as I am on this one. This one it looks like it might be a little further back. This got a lot more clearance. Well, remember, these are welded needles, and it's almost impossible to get needles re welded and be straight as factory. And remember, one of them was an inch. Had an inch different bend than the other, and I think it's this one that's giving me so much trouble. It's also rubbing against the weld, so it'll probably end up breaking again. Before it's over with. The only thing I know to do is try it. There is some adjustment on it, supposedly. But I wouldn't trust them nuts to break free for nothing. So, what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to the twine disc is, is the last thing you got to check really. Okay, the last thing to check is this clearance here. And it says the notch in the twine disc must be correctly positioned to receive the twine from the needles. When the needles have entered the knotter, the left edge of the twine disc notch should be a quarter to five sixteenths from lobe on the twine holder. If the knotter has twine, if the knotter does not have twine, the opening will be three thirty seconds to an eighth, which is a lot smaller. And that's the left, and that's the lobe. So I think them look pretty good. Both of them look about the same. I grease it up. Remember, don't put oil on that. You'll never get it to tie. I got my twine in. Just gotta go through this tension holder down through the bottom and then one to each needle and tie them off each needle tie off to the something uh, stationary and so just to start her up and try to grease grease these chains up good be careful there's, there's one chain down here it's going to be hard to get to it's the sweep chain I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm hoping I can get to it from the bottom. Yeah, it's the moment of truth. I got all the chains, chains greased up. So she's gonna tie. Yeah, I said I hung up on that bill hook right there. That'd come clean. Let's 
like not quite getting in the notch on this one. It's pretty good on that one. Anyway, the only thing I know to do is take it to the field, try it out.